welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at neutralisation reactions. This video will be suitable for those of you studying S3 chemistry, National 4 chemistry or wanting a refresher before looking at National 5 acids and bases. First of all we'll start by looking at the pH scale again. So here is the pH scale. It runs from below 1 to above 14. All the numbers for below 7 are acidic, all the numbers above 7 are alkaline and then 7 itself is neutral. Today we're going to be looking at how we can use the acidic and alkaline pHs to make something which is neutral. So we're going to look at it from the point of view of taking an acid and trying to neutralise it. To neutralise an acid you need a base. Bases are metal oxides, metal hydroxides or metal carbonates. These will all neutralise acids. Anything else which is a, say, a metal chloride, a metal nitrate, a metal sulphate are salts. Alkalis are soluble bases and metal hydroxides tend to be alkalis. So metal oxides and metal carbonates can be insoluble, they are still bases but they are not soluble. So what happens when you add a base to an acid? So here on the left we have an acid and this has a pH of less than 7. Here on the right we have an alkali or a base which has a pH of greater than 7. If we mix these two together in the correct proportions, then we will produce a neutral solution. This has a pH of 7. So we've said that bases can be soluble or insoluble. So if we are using a soluble base, such as an alkali, then we can use an indicator to follow our reaction. So in this reaction here, we have hydrochloric acid in our beaker. In the burette, we have a soluble base such as sodium hydroxide. If we were to use an indicator such as universal indicator, at the start of our reaction it would be red. Now we would be aiming to go to neutral which would be green. So as we slowly add our base into the acid, you'll see the indicator change colour. So now it is less acidic because we've added some sodium hydroxide which has started to react with the acid. We eventually get to a point where we reach the neutral point, so we've added just the right amount of sodium hydroxide to neutralise all of the acid and no more. However, because this is soluble, if we add too much sodium hydroxide, then we tip the balance in the other direction. If we think back to our pH scale, where we had the reds at one end, the green in the middle and the blues at the other end. We've went from being acidic, we've managed to get it to neutral and now we've got excess of sodium hydroxide so it's been alkaline. So this is the point at which you would want to stop where your indicator shows neutral. However, what happens if we're using an insoluble base? So in this case, we don't need to use an indicator. So in the beaker, we have sulfuric acid this time. Our base is insoluble and we're using copper carbonate. Now when copper carbonate is added to sulfuric acid, we get a colour change and it produces blue copper sulphate which is neutral.
and that's the solution, so it's in water. It also produces a gas, carbon dioxide. However, because it's insoluble, if we add too much copper carbonate, we get an excess of copper carbonate left over. Because of this, we're able to see when the reaction is finished without using an indicator. So when the reaction completely stops giving off carbon dioxide and you get an excess of copper carbonate at the bottom, then you know that you have neutralised all of your sulfuric acid and there's nothing else for the copper carbonate to react with. At this point, you can filter off the excess copper carbonate. You get your copper sulfate solution, which you can then heat to produce copper sulfate crystals. So when we're writing out word equations for the acids and bases neutralisation reactions, we have our acid plus our base to give us water and a salt. This happens for all of your bases. If your base is a metal carbonate, as in the example be before, you'll also get carbon dioxide produced. The naming of the salt is very important. So the first half of any salt's name comes from the metal of the base. So here we have three bases. So we have sodium hydroxide. So the start of the salt's name will be sodium. Here we have lithium oxide. So the start of whatever salt is produced will be lithium. And copper carbonate, the start of any salt will be copper. For the second half of the name, you have to do a little bit more work. So you take the name of the acid and it gets changed slightly to give the end of the salt's name. So hydrochloric acid becomes chloride. Sulfuric acid gives a sulfate salt. And nitric acid gives a nitrate salt. It's worth learning these second halves of the names. Name the salt formed in each of these reactions. Pause the video now. So first of all, we need to identify our base and our acid. So acids always have acid at the end of the name and the other one will be your base. So we're going to take the lithium from the lithium hydroxide and we're going to change the sulfuric acid. So our salt will be called lithium sulfate. So in the second example, we have magnesium oxide as the base and nitric acid as the acid. So we take the magnesium from the base and we change the nitric into nitrate for the salt. So our last example we have sodium carbonate. So we have sodium from the base and we take chloride from the hydrochloric acid, so, uh, acid. So we end up with sodium chloride. In this final example, you would also get carbon dioxide produced in addition to water. For these examples, try and fill in the missing reactants or products. Pause the video now. So in the first example, we're filling in the salt. So we'll do what we did before. So we're going to take the sodium from the base and we're going to change the nitric acid. So we would get sodium nitrate as our salt. In the second example, 
we've been given hydrochloric acid, we're producing water and we're producing lithium chloride. So we're trying to write the name of the base. So we're only producing two products here, water and lithium chloride. So we know that we don't have a carbonate. The chloride part comes from the hydrochloric acid. So our base must be a lithium base. And we have two options. It can either be lithium hydroxide or lithium oxide. They would both produce the same products. In this final example, we're trying to get two uh, reagents. So we're looking for the reactant here and this product. So if we start with the reactant, we have copper carbonate, which we know is a base, so we're looking for the acid that was used. So if we look at the salt's name, the copper comes from the base, whereas the sulfate came from the acid. So sulfate would have been produced from sulfuric acid. And then finally, we're looking for another product over here. So we've got a carbonate, which always produces your salt, water and carbon dioxide. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for regular updates on new videos and flashcards at 6pm. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.